okay, we don't have time for a BS intro. This is a very serious topic I want to cover. So, boys, and the one random girl that accidentally stumbled onto this video, welcome. Today, we are going to dissect why the ending to Naruto was trash and how we're going to fix it. I'm only going to dedicate a small portion of our video in explaining why the ending to Naruto, Tiana trumped so hard, just so we can focus most of our net chakra in fixing the ending to it and making Naruto the greatest anime of all time. Top two. Definitely top four. Oh. One of the reasons the ending blowed no diddy is the main antagonist had more plot holes than, I don't know, something else to do with diddy. How come Madara could use the Susanoo when he first came to run fades with the Shinobi Alliance when he had the eyes of Stevie Wonder? And for those saying, hey, once you awaken it, you can use it forever. Okay, how come Kakashi used it and once he lost Obito's eyes, he could never use it again? And if I'm not explaining that right and there's someone who wants to correct me, Honestly, there's so many Madara plot holes that would require its own different video, so let's left swipe on it for now and focus on the most infuriating parts of the ending of Naruto. Bro, it dragged longer than my first grade teacher's titties. She looked like the teacher from the recess cartoon, and she had them hangers on her. Like, if you wanted, you could double dutch with them. If you wanted to become a better boxer, you could use them as a speed bag. You could put them over your shoulder and use them as a roller coaster seatbelt. And with that, I apologize for the detour. Let's get back to the topic at hand. When you think of the fourth great ninja war, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is that it had some of the more goaded squabbles of all time. Madara versus the Shinobi Alliance. Madara versus my guy, and we're going to get to that. Takashi versus bitchless Obito. Naruto versus the third Raikage, which in my opinion is one of the more underrated fights. And even though it had some of the best fights you'll ever see in anime, the storytelling felt like it was written by someone who'd never watched Naruto and just used the cliff notes. Okay, first things first. I'm a realist. No, but for real. Lady Tsunade should have been packed up. After she was done healing the other Kages from their battle with Madara, she should have been sent a one-way ticket to a Tupac concert. She was just no longer needed. Sakura had taken her place as healer and had arguably surpassed her. Takashi was next in line to become Okage. And it's been stated multiple times before. The more and more you use Creation Rebirth, the more and more your lifespan is shortened. And I know she does have the Senju lifespan, but it just makes no sense for her to keep surviving after so many uses of the technique. And look, I, it was very heartwarming when Don saved her from Madara and she used the power of friendship and not wanting to quit anymore, but... Look, bro, I'm sorry. You just gotta take one for the storyline. Let's revisit the Madara and my guy fight. And this is a hill I'll happily go out on. My guy should have been able to defeat Madara after opening the eight gates, and they should have both passed then and there. It takes one of the best moments in anime and makes it arguably the best. And the only thing that can compete with it is when Deji from Chainsaw Man finally got to find out some boobies after continuously risking his life. And this gives both characters deeper meaning. For my guy, who embodies the spirit of what the show Naruto was supposed to be, someone who came from nothing, who had to work for everything he got, gets to be the hero we may not want, but we deserve, because when Madara knocked, my guy bucked. And, like, what were they saving him for? It's not like he's doing anything in Boruto but wheeling around. And for Madara, that's easy. He gets to have a defeat an antagonist of his caliber deserves to have, instead of just being used as a stepping stone for a villain who is just a launch pad for Boruto. Now, I did save this opinion for last because it is a teensy weeny a little bit controversial. And that's because it involves Sakura and Hanada opening up a joint OnlyFans account to pay for Sasuke's funeral after Naruto packs him up during the battle at Vel at the end part 2. Okay, look, I get Naruto's whole I do not kill stick, but please bear with me, because having Sasuke join Lady Tsunade at Tupac's funeral does three important things. Number one, it gets rid of Sasuke, which is fantastic, because I hate Sasuke, and I'm never one who shies away from admitting he's biased. Numero tres menos uno. Having the battle end in a tie unironically shows how far superior Naruto was to him. Because during their entire battle, Sasuke was trying to unalive him, while Naruto was just trying to defend the North Hawk Jutsu. And B, Naruto spent the entire war not only knuckling up, but giving away his chakra like it was a stimulus package. And last but not least, I know I'm kind of repeating myself here, but I do feel like it would help Sasuke's character a lot. The entire series, it seemed like his character was stuck in limbo. I, between being misinformed or misled. Misinformed by Orochimaru or misled by Bissus Obito. And... Look, I don't know how his battle with Naruto would end. Maybe somehow, someway, Naruto is holding Sasuke's sword, and Sasuke runs into it. Have that be the first decision he makes for himself. Have that be the way he atones for his sins and the grief he's caused the Hidden Leaf. 
And that way, Naruto still gets to keep his whole I don't kill shtick. And I feel like it would be a cool tieback to Madara versus Hashirama. And I know that, like, the whole point of it was to break the cycle of death and, like, bring peace. But I don't know. I feel like it would be a unique way to end Naruto. And honestly, I kind of just freestyled this at the end. Also, they already used a get-out-of-jail-free card for Hidden Leaf Terrace on Orochimaru. 